how are you doing? It's Tanya and welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be a reading vlog for Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. I'm very excited. Initially this book was supposed to be my body read with Risha from Fort Love Classics, but it didn't go quite as planned. <laughs> I fell behind. I read the first like 70 pages, but then I fell behind and yeah, so basically Risha has already finished it <laughs> and I've decided to like, this is the time, this is finally the time to finish Madame Bovary and let's vlog it. <laughs> so that's going to be a vlog for, of me reading Madame Bovary. Initially I started reading it in Adam Thorpe's translation and it's quite a praised translation, he's a poet and yeah, it was supposed to be good, but for some reason I didn't get along with it. I don't know, it just... it didn't flow for me. <laughs> for some reason it just didn't flow for me. So I decided to change the translation, and so I decided to go with this Oxford edition. And it's translation by Margaret Molden. Me and Margaret Molden, <laughs> we get along. <laughs> we get along unlike me and Adam Thorpe for some reason. So Margaret Molden is doing it for me, so like I'm really enjoying her language, I'm really enjoying her translation, so I think I will finish this book in Margaret Molden's translation. So I'm super excited, I'm looking forward to like... I'm in the beginning, like just like first 70 pages, so I still have like a whole book to go. So it's going to be great, I'm looking forward to it, and let's start reading. ready to give you some update on Madame Bovary. I am currently on page like around 100, so I finished the first part and I am like in the beginning of the second, not beginning, but like some way through the second part. I am really enjoying this novel. I didn't expect to enjoy it from like the very first page, because normally when you start a book, like at least in my experience, I often have to push myself through at least like opening chapters because obviously usually things are just like opening up they're setting up you are just getting introduced to the characters to their situations so nothing much is usually happening and it's not always interesting right not with this book even though first chapters they really are opening chapters but we kind of start from the very very beginning so first of all actually the book starts not with emma but it starts with charles and it starts when charles is a very young boy he will play a big part in emma's life right he's her husband so obviously he will play a big part and i guess it's important for us as readers to know what kind of person he is where he comes from what kind of family he comes from what kind of educational background and cultural background he comes from because he will be reason for many things that happened to Emma. So I guess it's very logical that we start with Charles. It was a surprise to me because I didn't expect but then when you think about it it's actually a very intelligent and like very good move on the part of Flaubert to start with Charles and to show us Charles. I really really liked it but even though we start with like his very childhood there is no unnecessary like you know information everything moves very fast you see him grow up very fast you see everything that happens to him throughout his youth it all moves very fast so we, we get like the most important kind of pieces of information so he comes from not a rich family not very educated he has never been super gifted a super gifted child right or a super gifted student he is just a very normal very usual guy whose father is kind of military person who doesn't doesn't think anything much about religion doesn't think much of education he didn't want his son to go to school till like his son was like 15 or so. how, how how old was he when he 
first came to school. I cannot find it now, but he was like already in, in his teens. He was in his teens when he first came to school. So it just shows like kind of what kind, what kind of family his family was. And then by the end of the first or the second chapter, we already see Charles as a person who is getting married for the second time. So everything moves very quickly. Uh, so that's also kind of good, you know, good fast pacing. Another thing that I wanted to mention so far is that I personally haven't seen, um, apart from Charles, let's put Charles aside, but like apart from him, all the other characters, they are, like, you cannot describe them as nice people. Not a single character apart from Charles. He is like a special but Charles is not very intelligent I feel like he is so he's very simple and that's because because he is so simple he is not he cannot plot anything against anybody he cannot he doesn't have any aspirations for example he doesn't have any dreams to like advance socially or advance in his career I feel like it comes also because he is not really very intelligent. Charles aside, because he is kind of a nice person, even though he, yeah, he's boring, to be honest. I perfectly understand time that she's bored with him, but we will talk more about Charles later. All the other characters are really not nice people. All of them have their objectives, all of them have their goals, and they are quite egoistic, you know? They are very self-centered. It's not just Emma who is self-centered, Everybody actually, except for Charles. <laughs> but Charles also because he's just so much loves his wife. I to be honest, I do not like Emma. I really I really do not like Emma because of how she treats Charles. She's very fanciful, obviously. Like she has read all those romantic novels. She's all like in the clouds, she dreams about romance. She married Charles because she wanted romance, she expected Charles to give it to her. And then later on she kind of discovers that he is not the romantic figure from novels that she read about. Charles loves her so genuinely. He so genuinely, wholeheartedly loves her. And yes, he is not a romantic figure. Yes, he is not a knight on a white horse. Yes, he is not going to discover secrets of the universe. But he is so genuine. And he is so, like, honest in his feelings towards her. I cannot dismiss it. I cannot not respect it. And that's why Emma makes me so angry, because she is so blind. She is so blind. She doesn't see a genuine feeling, you know? She doesn't understand it. She is so shallow. I feel like she is... I, I don't know. To me, she feels very shallow. And she doesn't have any... Like, at least like at this point, she doesn't have any genuine feelings. And that's why she makes me so angry when her husband does everything for her, like whatever Emma wants. She wants a dog, she gets a dog. She wants to move to a different town where it all happens in the very beginning, so it's not like a big spoiler. So if Emma is bored and her Charles thinks that she is bored and like in a very kind of nervous state of mind because she because she is bored in this place. So she, he is ready and he moves to a different town where he knows nobody. He has no practice there. When here in this place, he is already an established doctor and people respect him. And he has a, like a lot of um, patients who trust and believe him. He is ready to give all of it up for Emma. To just move to a complete, completely, you know, far away town where he knows nobody, just because he thinks it will help Emma. So he is ready to do everything for her, he is ready to give up everything for her, yet she doesn't respect it and she doesn't... 
see it she doesn't appreciate it so that's why emma makes me very angry I, like i just want to shake her i want to hit her on her face and so just like emma wake up emma look emma just look just respect i feel like she needed a mother <laughs> but she didn't have a mother so yeah this book makes me emotional and you know that i like books that make me emotional and that kind of yeah give me feelings so so far i'm really enjoying this book i will continue reading and i will update you later Another update on Madame Bovary. I am continuing with this book and I'm loving it. I'm loving it a lot because it actually it creates a lot of room for like conversation and discussion. So if you read let if you read Madame Bovary, let me know in the comments what you thought of like all the characters in particular, what you thought about Charles, what you thought about Emma herself and like all their situations. I feel like it can be a really interesting like conversation discussing this book so what i thought i think that madame bovary is the first book i've read that very explicitly talks about the importance of reading good books but also reading them critically now i am not sure like about like good books because emma in this book she reads walter scott she reads Walter Scott novels and like you know Walter Scott is considered like a classic writer so that is good literature right uh, I I don't I haven't read Walter Scott so let me know in the comments like what kind of writer he is I know that he wrote historical novels but also I think I read it like before his historical novels he wrote a few romantic novels so maybe she was reading those I'm not sure so I, I don't know, maybe it's not the right thing to say, like, reading good books, because the definition of good book is very unclear, right? Um, but at least reading critically, at least reading critically, because she reads these romantic novels and she reads them as real life scenarios. Like, she genuinely believes that these romantic heroes exist and she only needs to find them. <laughs> she just needs to find one romantic hero <laughs> and then she will be happy like she genuinely believes that people like that exist so she really doesn't read her books critically <laughs> she just reads them and takes them for real life and that's where her problems begin i guess so that's interesting how um very explicitly flaubert actually talks about um the importance of reading critically but also you know quality of literature that you consume also remember i told you that i don't consider emma to be very intelligent <laughs> it is confirmed <laughs> it is confirmed because she's manipulated just like that she's very easily manipulated like a person can just tell her like emma i love you let one tear slide down his cheek and Emma will believe him <laughs> and she will be ready like to do everything for him she will be ready to go to like the very edge of the earth with him if he just he just cries a little bit and just tells her that he loves her and I'm like Emma <sighs> Emma <laughs> like she is so dis like she is so disgusted by Charles because he's so simple but she herself is also very simple <laughs> so she's really very unfair like to charles she has very high opinion of herself that's why I, like i don't like her but at the same time when you read this book you understand that flaubert he doesn't dislike emma like he 
often in this book you will see like the way he talks about her the way he talks about her behavior you can see like a warmth towards emma he does make fun of her he makes quite quite a bit of fun of her like romantic ideas and it's often funny uh, of her like romantic behaviors like her romantic dreams there are a lot of like fa funny elements he really does make fun of her but it's like it's like a humor you know it's not a bad laughter it's more of a humor so you often see, like, i don't know i feel like warmth i feel that flaubert had warm feelings towards emma Bovary, and i, I think i found somewhere on the inter internet that he like said that emma Bovary is me or it, I'm not sure, I don't, I don't know if I understood it correctly because it was like in French, but you know, it's kind of the way I, I interpreted it to myself, like Madame Bovary is myself. So yeah, maybe that's why he had such warm feelings. Emma is an interesting character. She is very sensual. She is also very emotional, like her emotional side, her sensual side are very developed. She might be not very intelligent, but she has like she has a lot of feelings in that aspect she's like she's very interesting I cannot say like i despise her i often sometimes when i read about her i also feel like sorry for her because she she's genuinely unhappy yes i don't respect like, I, I, i'm angry with her because she doesn't see how much her husband loves her and how much her husband is ready to do for her and how and that she doesn't appreciate his genuine emotion yet she's so easily swayed by you know lies and she believes lies so easily but i also feel sorry for her like i, I don't know it's it's kind of it's hard <laughs> it's hard to understand how you feel when you read Madame Bovary. I'm angry with her, but I also feel sorry for her. <laughs> but at the same time, she is the reason she is unhappy. Not Charles herself. She is to blame for her unhappiness because she doesn't appreciate, she doesn't see a sincere emotion and she is just so easily manipulated by lies make a very interesting topic for discussion so let me know what in the comments if you read this book what you thought about emma i i'm really enjoying this book i'm really really because i think so much like about emma her behavior people around her and uh, yeah it's interesting it's really really interesting i would yeah i'm really enjoying this book so i will continue hi everybody i am reading madame bovary i'm almost here at the end of the book finished chapter seven of part three this book by the end is it's very much like a dream like madame bovary emma herself she's like she's frantic at the end of the book she is like in a dream herself like she doesn't really understand i don't think she completely like kind of grasps the reality i don't think that she like when you read this book in the end it doesn't feel real like Flaubert is so good at like making you feel like in a dream making you feel like these things are not happening like you know like it's just something a vision like it's not real and I feel like it's how Emma feels and that's how the reader feels crazy insane and it's just it's so well portrayed in here and by the end it's just be becomes very kind of urgent you just want to read it fast and you want to figure out what is going to happen because like you are so like your heart pains so much for all the characters here for emma for charles in particular in my case at least like i feel so terrible for charles crazy and it's just so good it's just so good so i will continue reading but i'm just so enjoying this book and to be honest like by the end by the end of the book it feels like i am reading a novel about a drag addict <laughs> to be honest i don't know if anybody of you have read this book let me know in the comments did it feel in the end 
did it feel to you like you were reading a novel about a drag addict? <laughs> because Emma becomes completely addicted, I think, to like this search for passions and for experiencing passions and for experiencing like life at its at its heights like i feel like she's addicted to kind of maybe not adrenaline but like this type of feeling when you just want your life always to be this kind of endless successions of passions and adventures and balls and dances and like all of this stuff and she, like she just cannot be without it like she just has to have it and then all the situation with like kind of money starts to evolve and to develop all this insanity like first her obsession but then all of this like insanity with money is kind of adds up and it creates this like crazy completely crazy situation which like i have no idea oh i mean i i think everybody knows how this book ends so, but yeah, you you can really cannot stop reading this book, just cannot, especially like in the end. It's so incredibly compelling, even like, like throughout the whole book, it's just so compelling. I am really loving Madame Bovary, I'm loving it so much. I really think everybody should read this book, it's so good, it's so good. It is so good, so I will continue reading it, I will finish it, but this book is so good, it's just... Ooh. Okay, I will finish. Hi everybody, please excuse the, the hair, it's wet, I came out of shower, but I have finally finished Madame Bovary by Gustavo Flaubert, and I really enjoyed this book i really liked it I, lo I loved obviously the story itself i loved all the characters because all of them were so different and i talked about the characters already how not a single one of them is a good character well there are some bad characters like you know characters that like i really cannot think of a positive thing to say about them such characters the Rossage characters. But I guess it because Flaubert was a pessimist. I read in the introduction that he apparently was a pessimist and it shows in this novel. The ending of the book is terribly sad and not even because of Emma but because of what kind of happens to people around her, how she and her behavior affected not only herself but people around her as well. I also really liked how the kind of tone of the story changes throughout the book. I thought it was very interesting. So in the beginning of the book, it's just like a matter of fact, it's just a story. So there is this boy, he goes to school, he goes to university, a little bit of a joke here and there. So, but most of all, it, mostly it was a matter of fact tone. And then later when um, we kind of meet Emma and we get introduced to all of her ideas and then all of her affairs begin, there the tone becomes it's still kind of a matter of fact but there is more humor to it not humor more like of irony you know kind of bitter humor he's kind of just chuckling on kind of her romantic ideas and her behavior and that's why i chuckled as well like in many parts of the book like in the middle uh, where we were reading about Emma's affairs and her like romantic dreams and ideas it a lot of places were actually really funny like for example just one episode there was this Rudolf and he was kind of just looking for something in his boxes and he's this like womanizer guy and he has known a lot of women and he has had a lot of affairs and so he was just searching for something in like in his i don't know table or a box somewhere and there was oh, and there were so hair so much hair <laughs> because you know they were like exchanging locks of hair with like, like 
tall ladies and like it looks so much hair <laughs> it was funny and like there were a lot of these kind of funny remarks about this like roman romance stuff um, and then closer to the end tone becomes more serious but also in a way kind of terrifying because like like i said before emma behaves like a drug addict like a literal drug addict she understands that like she's in big problems with money but she, like she does she cannot solve it like she doesn't know what to do and at the same time she's like completely addicted to this her pleasures to her uh, affair and she's just totally addicted she thinks of nothing else but just kind of the her adventures her amorous adventures and that was a little bit scary it felt like she was kind of dazed and the narration itself and i as a reader felt kind of dazed like you know like in a dream and then the end was like really atmospheric like he is very good at like portraying atmosphere and at the same time you very clearly see critique towards society and critique towards people he doesn't only make fun of like these romantic ideas but he also very brutally like very brutally honestly criticizes the society and like you can feel the contempt that Flaubert has towards certain characters in the book that lead Emma astray and that prevent her husband from like, you know, having a proper practice. You can definitely feel this kind of contempt and mean laughter towards them, like, you know, like he's making fun of them. Um, not only like of them but of society because these characters at the end they're actually like the ones that succeed in society you know they receive medals of honor when you as a reader understand that they are actually completely rotten people completely rotten personalities very selfish very egoistic and very stupid to be honest very stupid and like no ideas no thoughts nothing yet they receive medals of honor <laughs> and honest characters such as charles for example they are completely being trodden on by these characters and you can definitely feel like the anger of flaubert because of that when you read about emma for example you can see that he has kind of tender feelings towards her as a character of course he criticizes some of her ideas of course he makes fun but that's the thing he makes fun it's especially like in the beginning it's more like a humor he definitely feels towards her and he understands her and he loves her he feels sorry for her as well like you can feel you can definitely see it as a reader how flaubert have very warm feelings towards emma it's something i really really liked such a good book really liked it really enjoyed it i will definitely be rereading it uh, i will definitely be reading it again so good i am going to read all of Flaubert, I will read. I'm, I have his Sentimental Education, which I will read. I've also ordered his um, some some saint, something about saint. I forgot the title. So I will definitely be reading more of Flaubert because Madame Bovary is just amazing. It's just so good. I love this book. I love this book. Very very good. Like highly recommend it. I would highly recommend this. Everybody, I accidentally lost the clip where I was saying goodbye to you. So this is going to be the last clip <laughs> where I say thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you read Madame Bovary, what you thought of all the characters, what you thought about the book, did you enjoy the book itself. So let me know in the comments. And I hope you are having a very good day. I hope you are staying safe. I hope you are reading good books and enjoying them. And I will see you soon in my next videos. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.